In previous videos, I've talked about the importance of each one of us to be creating content consistently. And I've also discussed the various formats of content that you could be creating. For example, writing articles and blog posts or making videos, etc. In this video, I want to answer the question, well, what should you talk about? What are the topics you could be writing about? And I'm going to give you five ideas to help you get that uh, creativity going. Okay. So the first, and these five ideas, by the way, are ones that I've used myself and I've, I've seen other people use very successfully. So not just five random ideas, but five best practices. So number one is to brainstorm and answer the questions that your clients and your prospective clients are asking you. So you could probably already take out a, uh, open a blank document and start writing out, okay, so clients typically ask me to solve this problem or clients ask me how they can achieve this goal or clients ask me uh, or clients talk to me about this particular concern, okay? So, um, or prospective clients, the reason why they decide to work with me, they, they, in our exploratory conversations, they typically ask me how they can achieve this in their life or how they can get rid of that in their life, okay? So brainstorm, and here's my challenge to you, brainstorm at least 25 questions that you can answer that clients or prospective clients ask you. And I would also even invite you to set a goal doesn't have to be in one sitting, of course, but set a goal for 100, 100 questions that you will answer eventually, okay? Now, one uh, place to get questions that sometimes we forget is right after a session you have with a client, okay? Do you have a post-client session routine, okay? If you do, I invite you to add this to it. If you don't, I invite you to start one. But in your post-session routine, you should be taking half a minute even to write down what was the question or questions that I addressed for my client in this session or what was the concern or the challenge that I helped them work through in this session. Every single client session you have is, is like a, 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 a gold mine for content okay even if it's just, even if it's just one topic or one question all right so that's number one uh, and and if you're if you're stuck if you can't brainstorm 25 then ask your clients okay hey what questions would you love for me to answer if i were to write a book okay or if i were to make a series of videos what questions would you love for me to answer okay so this is idea number one is to brainstorm and answer the questions that your clients and prospective clients ask you if you do that on blog posts or in videos, you will have created better content than probably most people in your field who don't even, they don't even create content consistently and then they're not even sure what content to create. So I've just given you this, this one best practice that really uh, I believe all of us, um, especially service providers, uh, sh should, be, should be using. Okay. The second idea is talk about stories from your work with clients. Now, this is different from the first one. The first one was really about answering questions. The second one is about telling stories. So as you work with clients, notice what are their, what are the transformations that they go through? Okay, and what lessons can, can the reader, or your, your audience, learn from that transformation? What lesson could they apply in their life? Okay. Uh, because telling just a story that someone transformed is, is, is good. It's good in itself. But then what is the aha moment? What is the insight? What is the advice that they could also apply in their life? Okay. And the great thing about telling stories is that it inspires people that such a change is possible. And of course, it helps people to see that, wow, you're doing great work. Maybe I should work with you too. Right? So that's, that's what the audience is thinking when you tell stories about your work with clients. Now, of course, don't mention client names unless the clients have given you explicit permission to share their names in public with, re with regarding to this story that you're going to tell. Third idea, 
Okay, and this third idea is one that is used by uh, the t some of the top bloggers on the internet. Okay, the third idea is to research a keyword that you want to be found for. What is a keyword? A keyword is imagine your ideal client is on the Google search engine and they are typing in something to try to solve the problem that you love helping people with or to try to achieve that dream or the goal that you love to help people achieve. So your ideal client is in Google, they're typing this in. What are they typing in? Maybe it's a question they're typing in. Maybe it's a topic they're typing in. Okay. Maybe it's a goal they're typing in or a problem they're, 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 they're typing in. That's called a keyword. A keyword is not just one word. It could be a one word or it's usually more than one word. It could be a phrase or it could be a sentence. That's still called a keyword. So, so go to Google and type in that particular keyword. And in one of my later videos, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the more advanced techniques for keyword research, how to use the Google Keyword Planner, for example. But for now, I just want you to Google a keyword that if your ideal client typed it into Google, that you want to show up in the top three results. You want your website to show up in the top three results. What is that keyword that they're typing in? Hopefully, you can brainstorm several of these. Now, as you type it in, okay, and press enter and see what the Google search results are that are coming back to you. Look at the top three results. Look at each of the top three results. Click through to them. And if it is a, if it is a resource, a, 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 if it's a um, blog post or if it's a video, uh, read the post or watch the video and see if you could improve upon whatever ideas are being shared in that article or video. Okay, so in other words, think about Google as a, Google is trying to be as helpful to the internet user as possible. So when the internet user is typing something and Google says, I want to give you the most helpful results, definitely in the first three results, I'm going to give you the most helpful one. And the reason I say first three is because something that maybe you don't know is that almost everyone only click on the first or second or third result in when they search online. Very few people ever click on the fourth result, fifth result, all the way through, and certainly almost nobody clicks to the second page of results. So you really want your website, that's the aim, is to get your website to the top three results for whatever keyword that clients are typing in to find someone like you to solve a problem that you solve for them, okay? So again, last, uh, let improve upon the content in the top three results for whatever keyword you want to be found for, okay? And then repeat that with another keyword and another keyword and another keyword. If you keep doing this and creating content in that way, you will, chances are good that you will show up in the top three results if your content is truly better than what's currently existing in the top three results for a particular keyword. Regardless, you will have created amazing content that you can help your clients with and help your audience with, okay? The fourth uh, idea is what are you seeing your clients share on social media? So when you look at their Facebook or when you look at their LinkedIn, when you look at their Twitter or whatever social media your clients use, um, and you should, not you should, but I do recommend that you think about following your clients on social media uh, if they're open to that. Um, you know, adding them on Facebook as a friend or following them on Twitter or adding them as a connection on LinkedIn. Um, what are they sharing? Okay, what articles are they sharing? What videos are they sharing? What, uh, what particularly those two types of things, those two types of resources. And whatever they're sharing, can you improve upon that thing if it's related to your field, okay? Obviously, if they're working with you, um, they're interested in your field, so they might share things that are related to your field occasionally, and when you do see that, go look at that resource they've shared and see how you can improve upon that resource. Say it, saying it in your own way, adding your own ideas to it um, so that it's even more comprehensive or even more interesting, uh, even more entertaining, etc. Okay? And then the fifth and final idea here is to 
summarize what you are learning in your field. So maybe you read books about your field on a regular basis. Each time you read a book, why not summarize what you, the, the, the five most important concepts from the book. Write it as a blog post or make a video about it. I always do that with um, you know, books that I read. I, I, I do a webinar on it that becomes a long YouTube video. So, or, or maybe you, you regularly read articles in your field. Well, um, you know, summarize the, the gist of three recent articles you've read in a blog post and um, link to those articles for, for, for the reader to get further information, right? So that's, that's, great, con <clears throat> that's great content because people really appreciate <clears throat> saving time by not having to read the book or having read all those articles that you've read. So um, the final idea really is to really focus your content on being, <clears throat> being an expert in your field, a trusted advisor in your field, and, and really a champion for your clients because you're always giving them helpful ideas, helpful content.